In today's video, I wanna talk about some of the updates that have come to the full version of Premiere Pro within the last year, as well as some of the newest features that have been introduced into Premiere Pro beta. Let me start with the features that have been moved into the full version of Premiere Pro within the last year. So if we look at our program monitor, we now have the ability to change this view into a red, green, or blue individual grayscale gradient, meaning that you can use this to help you find artifacts or noise in certain color channels. If you do a lot of color correction or color grading, let me know in the comments how these types of views could help you in your workflow. Another thing with the program monitor is the ability to use your middle scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom in and out. The other one that I use all the time is if you depress the button, now you can move the picture around your program monitor. I've been using this feature ever since it came out in beta and also in the full version probably every single day. And since I'm still here in the full version of Premiere Pro, before I hop over to beta, one more thing I wanna talk about is the ability to sync our audio or video clips via LTC or linear timecode. This is an analog audio signal version of timecode that sounds like this. Yeah, it's pretty annoying to human ears, but back in the days of analog, this was a very important type of signal that allowed all of the different devices to sync and talk to each other. I wanted to test this out, so I'm playing a video file that has the audio timecode signal pumping out of it at the same time. It's going out of my headphone jack, and I'm splitting that to two places via this mixing board. I'm going to the left channel of this camera, and then I'm also going to a single channel on this camera. So from reading online, I believe what I'm supposed to do first is right click these two, modify, and I'm going to go to time code. You can see that there's an option here for linear time code. One thing that's interesting though, before I click on that is if I go to any of my other footage, like this footage right here, and I go to modify time code, Linear timecode is not an option, which is kind of cool in the fact that I believe it can tell whether or not you're sending that linear timecode audio signal to a video clip or not. So let me go back here to my test footage. So I'm gonna right click both of these, modify timecode. The digital timecode is already on both of those files. They're different though. So I'm going to say, hey, look at the linear timecode, which is that audio signal. And uh, we'll hit okay. I'm going to highlight all of these files, right click. Let's just create a multi-camera source sequence. I'm gonna highlight other timecode, linear timecode, and let's just hit okay and see what happens. I'm going to right click on my multicam sequence and I, I'm i hopeful that this works. So I'm gonna hit open in timeline. So this is the main file and uh, this that's one of the cameras, that's camera one. Let's just see how these look. Let me go a little bit further into the file. So at 32, wow, check that out. So my time code right here is 3212, and this camera is at 3212, so if I uneyeball this, wow, that's awesome. Uh, you can't really see here, that's 3212, look at this! 3212, how about that? And then my reference file, 3212, and that matches the exact same time code as what's in Premiere Pro, from the file, that is so cool. So if you if you are completely lost as to what I'm doing, if you look at the audio signal here, you can see that I'm pumping that time code. Let me zoom in. All of these kind of square waves are in a specific sequence every single second telling the computer exactly the time code that this file should be at. So how you use this in a production is there's different kinds of companies that come out with certain kinds of dongles that will spit out time code and they'll all talk to each other, all spitting out the same sound time code. You put that into your microphone jack and split the signal. So you have one side of the stereo signal, say the left side being the time code, and then you have the right side being your normal boom microphone or lav microphone. And then when you get in post, you could use this 
LTC time code type of syncing to have them all sync up immediately with a click of a button like you just saw me do. Let's switch on over and look at some of the newest features inside Premiere Pro Beta. The first of which I wanna talk about is the ability to save your project file as a template. I created a Premiere Pro project file that has all of the bins and audio track mixer settings that I like. That way I don't have to recreate them every single time I start a new project. So if I go over here to file, save as templates, and let's just call this hit that like button, hit save. I'm going to quit this, go back to Premiere Pro beta, and let's say I want to start a new project. So I'll hit new project. And right there underneath template is uh, some pre-made ones, and also there is my hit that like button. I'm gonna hit this, and one other thing I wanna point out here is this little gear button. Here on the color, we now have the ability to automatically detect log video color space and bring that into a color space that you're used to looking at, such as Rec. 709. So I'm going to click that right now to showcase what that looks like. I'll hit OK. We'll name the project, save it where I want to, and hit Create. We are now inside Premiere Pro Beta with some new looking aesthetics, but I just wanna to show to you that here is that same project file. My sequences have, brought, have been brought in, and if I click on one of the sequences, if I go to the audio track mixer, there are all of my effects on the channel. Getting back to the color log space, here I have a piece of footage from an old video that is obviously shot in log. This was on the Sony a7S III. And if I bring this straight onto my timeline, like so, and look at that. It automatically applied a correction LUT to my footage, which is phenomenal. You're on a production and you get footage from a drone that's in log. You get footage from a RED and an ARRI camera, and then say there's a Sony camera and a Canon camera. You have all of these different camera operators giving you footage that may or may not be all in a certain type of log color space. And I really welcome the fact that I can bring all of that footage into Premiere Pro and immediately get a color space on my program monitor that I'm accustomed to seeing as opposed to bringing it all in and manually applying the correction LUT to bring it into something like Rec. 709. And if you want to edit the raw log footage, just go into your Lumetri color and you can turn that setting off, but it's nice to have this option right from the jump inside Premiere Pro. And since I'm over here in this window, let me click on this properties tab and that brings up a lot of the same attributes that you're used to adjusting in the motion parameters of our effects controls window. And I'll bring that up by hitting shift five. So position, scale, rotation, anchor point, a lot of this is familiar, right? But we now have crop. We have crop in this window, which is <laughs> amazing. So you can just crop straight inside the motion parameter, inside the effects controls, or this one is more geared towards just having something a click away in the properties window. The other thing that this properties window does is give you the attributes that you may want to adjust on specific types of clips. So right here we have the volume. Let me just create a graphics here and see what it Create. Yeah, so the properties is also right here for graphics. We also have the ability to go and toggle what we're manipulating on the program monitor. So we can toggle our transform, which is what you would expect. You click this and you can move the thing around. Let me undo that. Or you can go down here and click crop and you can crop directly on the program monitor, which is so nice. It is so nice to have that feature. One thing that I wish was added to this though, is the ability to right click and fill or fit the footage to your program monitor. What do I mean by that? Well, 
Right now we have a fill and fit inside the transform. This is similar to set to frame size, except now they give you nice illustrations on the side or icons that show you what this does. As an example, let me bring in a vertical photo from my iPhone of a accent wall that I built. If I highlight this, and I do fill to frame, you can see that it gets rid of the black bars on the sides and there's more space here on the bottom and top. But if I hit fit to frame, then it shrinks it down to fit the entire photo in the frame. I'm glad that there's a fill and fit here now. I would prefer to have an option also to right click a clip inside the program monitor and have those available to me here. Another aspect that I would appreciate with the program monitor is the ability to see what's going on off frame. So instead of having just gray and these handles to showcase to me that there is more footage at the top and bottom, I would much rather see that footage at a lower opacity right here on the top and bottom. I guess that's my two cents on what I would also update with the program monitor for now. One quick thing on aesthetics is that there's now rounded corners on things like the clips, these graphics right here in the highlights, um, these icons now have rounded corner squares instead of straight squares. Another thing, and I don't know if this is just with beta, but if you go to the effects and look up obsolete, there's no longer a obsolete folder in video effects. At least I don't think there is but we'll see if the newest version of Premiere Pro, the fullest version, completely gets rid of all of the things that are considered quote unquote obsolete. Speaking of the effects, the corner pin effect is now an accelerated effect, which is double thumbs up from me, meaning that when you export your projects utilizing this effect, it will export faster, it'll play back smoother and easier within Premiere Pro. All of that is welcome. In fact, one of my most watched Instagram reels is a tutorial showcasing this effect. If you haven't seen or utilized this effect before, I have a couple tutorials on it. I'll link them somewhere on the screen right now. One thing that I don't know if I brought up, but I wish they would add the shutter angle for motion blur to the transform property. I don't think I'm the first editor to tell them that once they've showcased this. I'm positive that that's on their mind to add something like that to this window because it's in the transform property. So I think everybody is just accustomed to, if it's a part of this effect and all of these other parameters are here and now crop is, why not add the shutter angle option from the transform effect into the motion effect so we don't have to load that in every single time we wanna add motion blur to graphics or any movement inside the program. Adobe Max is right around the corner, so I'm sure there is going to be so much more to talk about after Max or during Max about some of the other updates that hopefully they introduce into the program then. Until then, uh, my name's Javier Mercedes and I hope you're out there living a life of abundance.